Our story begins with Blade visiting the doctor, who delivers both good and ominous news. Blade's health is improving, but a dire warning follows. Using more than 30% of his full power could be fatal. In the school corridors, Jessica introduces Maria to Blade, revealing a shocking request. Maria needs Blade to kill her if she loses control of her powers. At lunch, Maria confides in the group, disclosing that she's not entirely human. She's a part demon with potent, uncontrollable abilities. She's been struggling to contain these powers since her fight with Q in Fear's expulsion from Rosewood School. Sympathizing with Maria, the group resolves to help her conquer her inner turmoil. The group heads to testing grounds to Arena, with shields at full power. Blade encourages Maria to release her strength fully, assuring her that he'll be there if anything goes wrong. Maria releases her restraints, causing an immense storm of power to engulf the arena. Her strength multiplies over 160 times, and she transforms into the formidable Demon King. Despite their efforts, Maria easily overpowers Ernest and Leonard. Sophie intervenes, using her ultimate gravity to strip Maria of her flight ability. Q seizes the moment to unleash Flame Breath, but the Demon King counters by compressing it into a projectile and hurling it back. Blade takes the fight seriously, launching a relentless barrage of attacks. Eventually, his holy Demon Blade slices through the Demon King's defenses, causing Blade to faint. Blade awakens in the medical care unit, narrowly escaping death. His majesty informs him about Maria's true identity, the daughter of the Demon King. Later that day, Blade encounters Maria, who is now blended in with the other students, but adopts the nickname Mayo. Jessica expresses her fear of never seeing Maria again. At night, Mayo appears at Blade's home and insists on a date. Ironically, she threatens not to leave until she kills him, Blade weakened from their previous encounter, can only use 15% of his power. In their conversation, Mayo reveals that Maria resists the urge to remove her necklace, which would unleash her maximum power. Mao explains her own existence as a coping mechanism to escape her traumatic past. A few days later, Eliza suggests that the pendant Maria wears might be a recording device that could potentially bring back Maria. Mayo agrees to an experiment, and they activate the pendant, playing a recorded message from the Demon King to Maria's mother. The heartfelt message from her father touches Maria deeply, revealing the true reason he left. The group bids farewell to Mayo, who faints to let Maria take control once more. Blade, accompanied by Ernest, Sophie, and Q, venturing into the bustling city. Along the way, they encounter an underpass blocked by a cart full of cargo seemingly stuck. Curiously, it appears to have been pulled by a centaur. To Blade's surprise, he and the centaur recognize each other, but he discreetly requests her not to reveal his identity as the great hero. The centaur introduces herself as Dion. Blade and his friends offer their assistance in transporting the cargo to His Majesty. Upon arrival, His Majesty assigns Dion a new task, to teach at Rosewood Academy. Dee owns inaugural class showcases her formidable skills as she effortlessly bursts through indestructible god iron cubes using her demon lance. Dion introduces herself to the class, hinting at her connection with the great hero. Blade's friends sense something more and decide to befriend her to uncover the truth. While Blade bathes Q in the next room, he overhears his friends discussing him and Dion. Curiosity peaked. Blade intervenes, urging Dion to share stories about his childhood without revealing his heroic identity. Blade and Ernest embark on a shopping trip for groceries, only to witness the Samurg, one of the four continental sacred birds, swooping down and destroying a freight wagon. Blade's quick thinking prevents Ernest from drawing her sword, and the Simurg, unharmed, departs. The duo traces the cargo back to His Majesty and learns about the Simurg egg within the freight wagon. His Majesty explains the unique conditions required for it to hatch, including positioning it at the same height as a 10,000-year-old tree and bathing it in the setting sun's light. His Majesty reveals his motive for relocating the egg, 
seeing it as a valuable training opportunity for the Academy students. A plan is devised to divert the Seamurg's attention from the lifted egg. The students gather to lift the egg, while the Seamurg relentlessly searches for it throughout the city, destroying every freight wagon it encounters. The students courageously engage to defend their city from the Seamurg's wrath. As the sun begins to set, Blade devises a daring plan urging his fellow students to protect the egg at all costs. D. Own joins him, offering assistance in carrying the egg to the top. With the egg in peril and the Simurg approaching, Sophie uses her time, stopping ability, allowing Blade to unleash his Dragon Eater attack, halting the Simurg in its tracks. The Simurg egg finally hatches at the right altitude in the setting sun's light, and the hatchling assumes Blade as errant a heartwarming and unexpected bond forms, concluding this thrilling episode of Blade City Encounter. Stay tuned for more incredible adventures with Blade and his friends as they navigate the challenges of Rosewood Academy and the mysteries of their world.